Morning. I swear a lot. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You joined me for a bit of Total Warhammer 3 because it occurs to me, especially with two rather pressing series going on at the moment, two series that definitely test me quite a bit. Not, not like in a bad way, but you know, they're quite demanding, especially Fear and Hunger. I thought it might be worth trying to focus on having a few more relaxing ones as well, where I can kind of kick back and just enjoy the experience, and so Warhammer 3 is definitely a game like that for me. I know it's not a game for a lot of you who watch the show, but some of you might get a kick out of it, so it'll be cool. It's all good. I've been doing a Dark Elf campaign in my spare time because I do like the Dark Elves. I'm a big fan. They need an update. They really do. They need some work done to them a bit more than what they've gotten. But they're in a decent place, and I still enjoy playing as them. I particularly enjoy playing as the Cult of Pleasure. Not really sure why, but jokes aside, actually, I enjoy playing as the Cult of Pleasure because I quite like their mechanics. I like the whole Slanesh corruption thing and the, it, how it interacts with the slave mechanic. I think it works quite well, and I like their star position as well because being forced into conflict with, like, the entirety of Ulthwan early on leads for some quite engaging experiences. It gets quite stressful, but as you can see, we've actually made landfall here and we're starting to push in on them. And Inkari's over here just holding position, but still providing them with a distraction. And Bellacor is starting to push in. He's even taken Oratory Vress, for God's sake. So he's doing well. I had a long-standing military alliance with Hexaotl, but they got quite tired of me because of my friendship with the Dread Fleet and the Exiles of Nehek. Skeleton boys up here, the bony boys. Uh, so they've cancelled all their treaties with me, and war with them is going to break out at any point. So I've set a canine assassin down here. I've got an My army ready to fight them when the when the time comes. Get another shade. Shades are brilliant. And I'm thinking, have Kagarosh here just move in and take uh, the Fallen Gates and provide them with a juicy target to send all their armies at so we can hold them there. And probably have uh, Ilrishan come down here, take the Ziggurat of Dawn as well, and we've got like two things for... Hexaotl to focus on until we can say finish taking Ulthwan and then loop round to start hitting them from there. But that's all plans in the future and stuff that probably won't even come to pass today. I've not picked a particularly special moment in the campaign to showcase, I just fancy doing it. But let me talk to you guys about Marathi. Right, because she's actually one of my favorite legendary lords, not just from a appearance basis, but also because she's really fucking good. You'll notice that her army consists of pretty much the same unit, spammed. I don't tend to do doom stacks, to be honest. I do prefer to balance my armies and have some variety in there, but there's a reason why I've done this for Marathi, and it's because it's absurd. You look at these stats for these shades, uh, and this won't mean a lot to many of you, but shades are ranged units. They're crossbowmen. Like, that's their job. But their melee attack and melee defense, which are primarily melee stats, as I'm sure you can imagine, are on par with or better than most normal melee units. Supreme Chaos Warriors are considered wrong. pretty good melee units, and their melee stats aren't even close. Now, Chaos Warriors would probably beat normal Shades in a melee fight because they're better armed and armored for it, but Shades would give them a run for their money, and their missiles would decimate them before they got close. And this is the beauty of Doom stacking. Uh, a, a stack of shades, basically, and Marathi does a lot for them. At the very least, the main thing she does is favorite assets, which just gives them a massive boost to their stats. You get Raid Leader down here to provide them with even more bonuses, and suddenly you've got an army of units that can fight um, at range, can do serious, serious damage at range, and then move in for the kill. On top of that, having these two in the army as well on chariots means they just rush in and destroy enemy infantry. It's super easy. It's a very powerful army. Mother of the Duke. And we have a Cambrian Wars Sphinx on the end because, I don't know, it's fun. They're fun units. Uh, it's not particularly pivotal For to my glory. battle strategy, though. It's just there because I want it. So Lariel's over there, and that's a bit of an issue. Honestly, the game says this is a decisive victory. I reckon we should just take Defend. it. Yeah, see, look, that's like a... That was a fortress, fully manned with soldiers. We took... Almost no casualties, because even the auto resolve considers our army to be that strong. Speed of Lycos. Uh, I'm not keen on it. We've taken the Unicorn Gate. We're continuing to push into Ulthwan. They've got nothing. Can't stop us. The strong get stronger. The elves fall apart. It's very funny. Fuck the elves. And then by getting this, our shades will get more armor, more speed, and we'll be able to shoot from further away, provided they're at the subsequent rank, which most of these are. So they're even stronger now, which, you know, like they were already strong. There's me over here. I always like to name a lord after myself. I just find it fun. 
But uh, yeah, I've got a Shade Doom stack as well, and while it's not as strong as Marathi's, I make up for this with two Spellcasters and some Cavalry as well, which helps out quite a bit. I've decided to land in the Chaos Wastes with a plan to move west to take these important Dark Elf um, settlements like Harganeth, and all the way over here, Nagarond and Hagrif. I'm actually at war with Nagarond. Weakling. At war with Malakif himself because he picked a fight with the um, exiles of Nehek, and I was like, no way, they're my friends, not turning against them. And I didn't have any diplomatic relations with Nagarond yet, so I was like, fuck it. Malakif, let's go, you and me, have a tussle. And it's not going well for him so far. I actually haven't fought him personally at all. The trap is set. It's Dargus, it is part of this region. But the frozen seas up there, I'm not particularly worried about holding on to Nagra. I'm here for Harganeth and the Dark Elf settlement, so I reckon I'll just start heading towards those. Ah, oh, some Chaos Warriors That's over here. At time of me of reaching my character, who is riding a dragon, by the way, he's high enough rank to do that. Dragons are very strong. He had just defeated, uh, what's her name? Valkyr the Bloody, the Gore Queen. Just took her down fairly easily, <laughs> or resolved it. It was actually that easy. Dark Elves do have some quite strong auto resolve capabilities. Serious. I've got some basic ass armies. Really, it's just basic lords with some units recruited from other factions to hold these gates because the gates themselves are pretty strong. These are spellcasters, so they can provide more than their value in a fight by just staying back and slinging spells. And if you utilize choke points and melee infantry combined with towers and some ranged units, you can destroy quite a lot of enemy units before your own are overwhelmed. So, we should be alright there. My sin's Sabioth over here. Because if Alariel starts kicking up a fuss, we'll want him to perhaps mess with her forces a little bit. She does have a Law Master of Hoath, and Sabioth is an assassin, so he might be able to take him out. That'd be really Hi, useful. Forces. The Masters have leveled up, they just get stronger and stronger. Get him some more speed. We love a bit of speed around here. Not methamphetamines, just the act of moving quickly. It's a family show, come on! It's not a family show. But I'm not that spicy either, honestly. I wouldn't describe myself as being particularly spicy. Well, Hexaotl are going to declare war on us, so I say we just start fucking with them straight away. Preempt them. If they end up declaring war soon, then having the Fallen Gates garrison be basically falling apart means Kagalosh will have an easier time of it, and that'd be quite good. Irishin's gonna have to wait until war starts so he can swoop in and take the Ziggurat of Dawn, but he's gonna need a full army to do that, because as it currently stands, he's not really in a position to actually do a good job of it, so, you know. Uh... Start getting this stuff. He's gonna have an army of Black Heart Corsairs, because, um... For those who don't know, this is a Black Arc, right? Dread this is a cool Lord, thing that dark, only Dark Elves do. Dark Elves darkness. have a bit of a focus on their navy. They like to do coastal raids and stuff like that. And if you perform the necessary rites, you get access to things called Black Arcs, which are Sail these. Which are like floating islands, basically. Floating island fortresses. And these, uh, these things, first of all, obviously they can't go on land. You're limited to sea and uh, coastal regions and stuff like that. But these things allow nearby friendly armies to uh, recruit, replenish, gain experience, get more captives when they win in battles. These things provide artillery. You straight up get artillery fire from them in battles if these guys are nearby. And they buff the fuck out of Black Ark Corsairs as well as also being cheaper to maintain than a normal army because you can only have them on the ocean. So, Black Ark Corsair Doom Stacks in Black Arcs is a very common and effective strategy because it works really well. Like, really fucking well. We get some allied recruitment. We've got Dread Fleet, Seducers of Slanesh, Exiles of Nehek, and the Shadow Legion here. We're doing all right. Let's get some more Chaos Warriors. Honestly, bellicor has been doing us a massive favor by providing us with so much chaff. Just melee infantry meat shields to go in there and lock heads with the enemy so that the archers can do their jobs. We just took Twisted Glade from Silostra. She's pretty much done now. We're pretty much forced into conflict with uh, Nagrond now because he's starting to move close to our territories. So I'll send Solantol up there. 
Hopefully you can start fucking with them. Kalin needs three turns because I'm having her recruit a Keeper of Secrets from the Seducers of Slanesh, which is one of Slanesh's most powerful units, by the way. It's a hybrid, fast-moving melee unit and also spellcaster. Big scary thing. And I want to use that to provide this army with a bit of magic support because it doesn't have any uh, spellcasters in it. And I'm currently at capacity for sorceresses, so, you know, it's a shame, but we're making do. I reckon in preparation for the big conflicts that will occur, if we upgrade Ilrishan's artillery, then that might give us a bit of an edge. I don't rate Black Ark artillery particularly highly. It's definitely not the most important thing or most useful thing that um, Black Arcs provide, but it's, it's useful. It's better than nothing, you know, it's something. I've really left these <laughs> provinces, this province to rot. There's fuck all going on here. The ancient city of Quintex and Titan Peaks is doing fantastically. I'm trying to lean in more on canine assassins for this uh, run because I never really use hero actions very much. It turns out canine assassins are really good. They are solid heroes. I really want to use them on the field of battle, but to be honest, they are most useful assassinating people and attacking garrisons and stuff like that, but... Oh, I really like having them on the battlefield, too. It's like I always enjoyed using um, Skaven Assassins on the battlefield because of their hit-and-run gameplay, like isolating targets and killing them. I always found it very enjoyable. I'm kind of using my um, allied recruitment at this point to just fill out <coughs> slots in uh, my armies at this point. Like, you can get some zombie pirate deckhands, which you may think, why, Foreman? The zombie pirate deckhands are useless. And I'm like, they are pathetic, yes, but they're very effective meat shields. They can just stand there and take the hits. You know, like I was saying earlier about the Chaos Warriors, but deckhands are actually better for this because they're less valuable. Which means when they inevitably die, you haven't lost as much. Meat shields are very important. You have to consider the quality of your meat shields as well. Because if your meat shields are too valuable, you're shooting yourself in the foot using them as meat shields. You kind of have to look at your army and be like, alright, my front line. Are my front line going to be meat shields or actual fighters? If I was playing as Warriors of Chaos, my front line would be fighters, because Warriors of Chaos are all about melee infantry. I might actually accept that proposal, because it will keep him off my back whilst I try and clean up some of, um, some of Nagrond. I won't take alliances. But I will take his money. I do love money, a big fan of money, all about money. And the Dark Elves have a pretty robust economy, to be honest. Like, the slave mechanics work quite well for this. I've heard that they're really difficult to play in Legendary Mode now because of the uh, penalties that Legendary Mode inflicts on you. It doesn't play well with how the Dark Elves are. But overall, I'm play playing on normal campaign difficulty. Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. I'm playing on normal battle difficulty, hard campaign difficulty. Because I find I prefer that. I like the campaign to be a little more challenging so that the computer actually gives me a proper fight. But when it comes to the battles themselves, I don't like the AI getting cheats. I find it annoying. Because when I lose, I don't feel like I lost. I feel like the game cheated me by making my, my enemy's units just way stronger than they should be. Which is why I like normal battle difficulty because it's like, okay, a fight's a fight. A win is a win and a loss is a loss. If I lose, it's because I lost. And that's the end of it. There's no like, yeah, but, or, well, he, no, I just lost. That's it. And that's, and as a result that I can accept, I'm happy with that kind of result. Because it just means I need to get better. Get rid of her Lawmaster of Harworth. Not allowed. Assassinate failure, 94% chance. Yeah, that sounds about right. I've played XCOM. I know the deal. Now we could, um... Start pushing into the center of Ulthwan, but I'd rather secure the outer rim of this giant elven donut before pushing into the center. Like the Phoenix Gate, I'm going to want to take as well. I'll need to put an army here in the Unicorn Is Gate. Time? But I'm going to need to keep Marathi nearby because Alariel would just roll over it. Especially since I think I they have haven't. Marathi. Yeah, they're not even properly established yet. The units there are still weak. I watch from the so we'll put you there and we'll recruit a lord. I like to have supreme sorceresses for this kind of thing because the spell support is helpful. Perceptive might be quite good. Deathcaster? Yeah, Law of Death's pretty cool. Burlaral. Supreme sorceresses are cool. They got boots. I like boots. Boots are cool. I don't know if, I know. I don't know if you knew this. I don't know how to tell you. But boots are cool. Get some skeleton spearmint actors. Fodder. 
you can be fodder, and you can be fodder. Lots of fodder. And we'll try and be a little tricky about this, right? And I'll put Marathi in ambush stance, so hopefully Ilariel won't detect she's there, which means we might be able to lure Ilariel into a preemptive attack, which will then result in Marathi joining in as well and completely decimating her, because Marathi could take her by herself at the moment, as it stands. But I want Marathi to go around here, maybe get rid of, um, Attain. Are Attain just up there? I think they're down here as well, aren't they? Yeah, because Lothen's their capital. At the moment, I've just got Admiral Iliak Krakenclaw, which I did not name. That's just the name of power he got. It's a really cool name. But I've got him down here holding White Peak, keeping Attain at bay. I reckon once the Outer Rim sorted, we can come into the center area, start kicking them out of here, and then Marathi could come down through here and start sweeping them up this way, whilst Iliac remains to hold this position. But the Eagle Gate and Griffin Gate are both benefiting from Black Ark artillery support, so that's really good. They've got a lot of support on them, and if anyone tries to attack Iliac themselves, good fucking luck. This Black Ark Corsair Doomstack is quite strong, and he's got an experienced caster on him. And his uh, black arcs have been fully upgraded along the skill tree, and his revered name of power, Krakenclaw, provides black arc corsairs with 100% increased damage. It's worth pointing out that Iliac has fought Tyrion before, and Alariel. He's defeated both of them. He's not a scrub at all. I think if I give his spellcaster her, if I give her Kalidor's Bane. How much bonus bonus versus large is that? A plus 12? It might actually make her able to take out large targets, like maybe eagles or something. Not dragon. You wouldn't be able to take moon dragons. No, no, you wouldn't. Hmm, I didn't know he had moon dragons. Ah, White Peak. We really need to upgrade you quickly, huh? Yeah, so the beauty of playing as the Dark Elves in this game is one of the many things I love. Is, and I never thought I'd say this, the slave mechanic, right? You can use slaves to instantly complete production of any building provided you have enough slaves and you can do this as many times as you want per turn provided you have enough slaves so as an example let's build watchtowers here to improve the garrison okay now let's finish it all right they're in place and the garrison has been improved literally that easy because i have the resources to do so the slave mechanic is quite powerful actually should we do it again i think we should do it again yeah, see, we've started build upgrading the settlement. That'll take five turns. No, it won't. It's done. <laughs> it's fucking absurd. <laughs> I love it. So good. Who's there? Oh, yeah, that's Decadent Host, right. But we want to go to Harganeth. That is what we want to do. Keep going. Bulky of the bloodies over there. It's a little scary, but I have dealt with her before, but my army is a little damaged, and me on my dragon actually means I wouldn't be very good at dueling her at all. To the point where I might actually switch to the Dark Pegasus. Because my sorceresses are also on a Dark Pegasus, so we could kind of move as a squadron. I think Dark Pegasus might be a better choice. Plus, it looks cool. Dark Pegasi? Whatever the fuck you would refer to them as. Ah, oh, fucking rad. You'll love to see it. Plus, with their faded out colors there, it kind of look like a Nazgul, and everyone loves Nazgul because they're fucking cool. It rhymes, so it must be true. I don't make the rules. I just repeat them to you. So Hexiotl are massing for war. I would love to start it early, but... Oh, I can start it early. Interesting. That might be worth doing, actually. How's the garrison looking here? It's still damaged. You reckon you can damage it again? Success. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the garrison. Garrison there is eight. You have 16 units. Yeah, you would take Cigarette of Dawn. I think we should move in on them. I think we start the war ourselves and get it going. Cause them some problems. For those of you who you know, either don't play this much or perhaps are struggling with it a bit and you're not sure why. Key focus you should always do, and this is going to sound so smooth brain and like not a good idea, but I promise you this is actually the best way to be. You always want to attack. Now, I say this as someone who loves to play defensively. I was, before I started playing this extensively, such a defensive game player. I preferred to play everything defensively. I preferred holding a position, letting enemies come to me and stuff like that. No attack. 
Always attack. Throw your opponent off balance. Force them to react. Do things they won't expect you to do and punish them for doing things they're trying to do. You should always attack. When I played boxing games, right? Well, boxing games. Fight Night Round 3 and 4, which are very similar. Um, I always fancied myself as being like a counterpuncher. That's what I thought I'd always want to play. I thought that was be that would be my calling, as it were. Um, but over time, I realized that I actually worked way better when playing that game as an infighter, an aggressive infighter, going in and and swinging. And because I spent so long trying to play as a counterpuncher, I got really good at dodging, which helped me become a better counterpuncher, an aggressive counterpuncher, or a better inboxer, a better aggressive inboxer. Um, so these are things you can do. But your words cannot save you. I'm gonna make peace with these guys because I don't need to be at war with them because I'm about to be at war with Hexaotl and oh you want alliances that's cool we can do that and you want to pay me a fuck ton of money yeah we can do that another yes. tip for anyone playing this game if you're gonna go to war with someone if you're about to declare war on someone check who they're at war with right not just for diplomatic reasons so you should check for diplomatic reasons but check who your opponent is at war with then talk to their enemy and see if you can get something out of them Nowadays, whenever I'm going to declare war on someone, I talk to my enemy's enemies and say, yo, you pay me some money, I'll declare war. They give me money, and I'm like, I was literally going to declare war anyway. So I've just gone paid for free to go to war, which is what I was going to do anyway. Small things like this can help maintain the health of your campaign. It give you a little boost. Now, uh, Tarakan doesn't stand a chance. He's got some good units, actually, and that's a cause for concern, but... I mean, Kagarosh has Harganeth Executioners who are fucking cool. And, I mean, just generally, we've softened up their forces as well. We've got Screaming Skull. Maybe we should play this battle. Like, I don't think I'll do a better job. In fact, I think I'll do worse. But maybe it'd be, f you know, for the purposes of a video, it might be fun to actually see these units in play. I've never really showed off Dark Elf units on the, on the channel before, so it might be worth having a look. Now, I mentioned you should always be on the attack, but the thing is, we have an advantage in this situation, and that advantage is range superiority. We have siege weapons. We have a lot of ranged units. This doesn't mean we should be totally passive, but we can actually afford to take a defensive position and let them come to us, because they can't just sit there or we'll shoot them to death. Which means they have to come at us, and because lizard men are usually a bit more melee focused, they will come to us. So we just need to pick the perfect position in which to do that. It's an interesting... Ma you know, I... Mm, I was going to say, I wonder if I set up the catapults here to shoot over there and hit them there, but their Coarsal, which is a flying support monster, let me show it to you, it's pretty cool. You see this thing? Yeah! That's a pretty cool monster, isn't it? It's neat. But the point is, that thing will come over here and wreck the fucking catapult. Now, I would put, like, shades along here to shoot out of the sky, but there's not a lot of space here. And if units are standing on top of each other, they don't shoot properly. So, if your defensive position is too cramped, it's not worth it. I forgot we had a blood rack Medusa. They're cool. They're very cool. The animations in this game are great as well. Just the units standing around. Here's Kagarosh on his cold one, which is a dinosaur, by the way. I wanted to show these guys off the Harganeth Executioners. These guys are fucking cool. Look at them. Very fucking... Just like the masks, the armor, the giant two-handed swords. Very nice. Very, very nice. And then you have Heartseekers of Slanesh, which immediately tanks all of my advertising money. Ah, oh, well. I don't think they will. They're not that explicit, but still. <laughs> Unnecessary. But that's Slanesh in a nutshell. So I'm thinking we kind of want to hold this position. I kind of want my heart seekers to try and go around the long way. Maybe hit them in the back. They don't have a lot in terms of ranged units though, so their the heart seekers use is limited. Maybe have them ambush stuff that tries to come through the trees. Just have them wait over here. We'll sneak through and then these guys will pounce them. Well, these guys attempt to hold the position here. Now, the beauty of these shades, of course, much like it is in Marathi's army, is that even if the front line falters and breaks and they break through to the shades, the enemy will find that they're in for more of a fight than they initially expected, which helps. Not many decent places for the um, catapult to go, but I reckon we just push it up to there and then it can fire on them from there. 
Medusa can come behind these guys. She can provide close range fire support. And if she gets forced into melee, she will do a decent job. She's quite tough. Kagorosh can go there. He has a crossbow so he can shoot them. And he's a decent melee fighter. We have a fire caster. We can make some good use of that, I'm sure. And I don't know, you can try and keep the troops in check. Do something. Figure it out. Okay. I think everyone's in position. I think so. All right. Start battle. Now you guys push up there. So you're in position. You guys... I want you to go like... There. That's just right. That's just right right there. Yeah, that's perfect. And then you guys flip right around to the edge over there. So you're in position to intercept them now what they do. They're kind of forced to approach us from here. So we can kind of make use of that. Of course, once... I would love to try and take that position. That'd be a solid choke point. But once the enemy are in range of the catapults, even before they start firing, they will advance. So we wouldn't... We wouldn't really have time, as it were. Streaming skull catapults are fucking cool. I love these things. I can't wait for them to start firing so I can show you guys. Because the screaming skull catapults. Brilliant. I will claim their gold. Cold blooded killers. Ah, oh, that line when they shout Druki. I love it when they shout Druki. It's so cool. It's one of the best, um, like, war cries in the game, I think, that the units do. Because a lot of them will say something along the lines of their faction. But, like,. These guys are the best ones. The way they shout Druki is incredible. So Skink Cohort with Hortz with Javelins might actually be one of the more riskier units they have because those Javelins do a fuck ton of damage. I reckon our Hagen F Executioners can probably deal with their Temple Guard and if not, then with the support of Shades they almost definitely can. Normally something I would do is I would send my wizard forward to start casting spells at their lines, but she's on foot. She's on foot. She doesn't have a mount, so she would just get run down and killed. And I don't really want that to happen. Screaming skull cowpole. <laughs> I love these things. They're so cool. Ah, oh, they're so fun to watch go. Tomb Kings are really cool. I did um, a Tomb King campaign recently in my spare time playing as a Libaris, and I got really far, and I got way into it as well. Tomb Kings are a lot of fun to play once you get them off the ground. And plus, they're skeletons! Skeletons! I love skeletons. Girls love it when there's a skeleton. <laughs> they didn't like it. It sounds like their problem. Now, for some reason, they are actually standing there and letting me fire on them to the point where, if they are actually just going to hang around... Here's what I'm going to do. Let's plug up that choke point. And now they have no real way of getting past our lines. Unless they come through the trees, which the Heartseekers will be able to stop them from doing. They're starting to move up now, because I think they're starting to realize the issue that they face, but it's a bit late for that now. See if you can launch a fireball at that fucking koala. We want to focus on that. Oh no, they're casting a spell. Move, 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 move. That wasn't great, but it is what it is. I think, yeah, those ancient salamanders are going to cause us some problems. Despite what the Aura Resolve claimed... Oh, hello. Oh, fuck, they're using... Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, oh, that's no good. Ah, oh, I don't like that spell. Ah, oh, I don't like that spell. Okay, right. You guys shoot down the koala. If we start charging into melee, they'll be less inclined to cast spells at us. Really? You went after the Medusa? Okay, if you wanna. It's your choice. I don't tell you how to live your life. Time for Flaming Head. Get you a girl who can Flaming Head. 
Oh, you love to see it. Burns for days. I'm going to move the heart seekers around to start taking care of them because they actually do a lot of damage. Oh, the screaming skull catapults could do with not shooting our own troops, if that's all right. The co the Coatl. I have great difficulty in saying that name. It's almost dead. In fact, it is dead. In the time it took for me to say the name properly, it died. Get the Medusa over there. Good. Rush the Salamander. Throw a fireball at him, it'll be funny. Come on, it'll be hype. Everyone loves fireballs. I love girls who cast fire magic so hot. Kablams. Murderous mastery is kicked in when we kill or enough units die. I think it's when we kill enough units we start gaining massive buffs. Their leader has freaked the fuck out. The Hagen FK executioners are doing all right, must be said. Considering lizard men are pretty fucking good in melee. The heart seekers are absolutely tearing these two apart. Army losses is kicked in. There it is. So honestly, if we'd all resolved that, we probably would have got a better result. Just putting it out there, but like I said, I kind of wanted to show it off. I wanted to show you guys some of my favorite units. And I also wanted to look at the Hagen F executioners because I've never recruited them before. I believe their leader just died. No, he's still alive. He's still alive. He's doing great. He's still alive. He's doing great. He's dead. Okay. Good job, buddy. Throw a fireball at him. It'll be funny. I love it when girls throw fireballs at things. Go. Yeah. Oh, you miss. It's okay. The shades will take care of it. Yeah, so Dark Elf armies are quite strong, as it turns out, especially when they're organized, but that probably would have been even easier if I just had a Doom stack of Shades. But like I said before, I don't really like to Doom stack stuff too much, because I think it makes armies a little bit boring. I liked having the flexibility of, um, you know, having Hagen F Executioners go in, anti-infantry greatsword units, and having the Heart Seekers go around and hit the Salamanders from behind. Screaming Skull Power Catapult was a blast, it got 238 kills, it got the most kills in that battle. If I was Doomstack and Shades, I wouldn't have seen that. I definitely approve of Doomstacks. I think they're a good idea and they're very fun to build, but they're kind of less fun to actually play when you get on the battlefield, if you know what I mean. Unless you have something like a Minotaur Doomstack, at which point it's just fun to watch. But I don't like to Doomstack every army I've got, because then it tends to get really old really quick. Death Mask, hello. Never seen that before. Physical resistance 10%, cause fear, cause terror. That might actually be really useful for the sorceress. Because if she gets pinned in a uh, combat, Occupy she can scare him off. So there we go. We've taken a forward position. Dreadlord of Nagara. Which the, uh, the, the, what are they called? The lizard men will likely throw themselves at over and over again. You know what, Kagrosh? You can keep that, actually. You earned it. You want a death mask? You keep it. Destructive, this one. Now, I could give him a name of power that either improves his army, improves him, or improves the faction. I'm going to get that, because I've almost never gotten the aristocratic name of power. What are we going to get? Dread Tongue. Plus five diplomatic relations with Dark Elves and less construction cost. Or Dark Path. Movement range and ambush success chance. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme, 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 gimme. That's some good stuff right there. You'll love to see it. Get this guy training the troops so that if they take a while to attack us, his units will just get stronger and stronger. She's got a horse now. She's a lot more useful. You'll love to see it. Get Hikati's blessing because maintaining Windsor Power Reserve is very important. And Erdothane, I mean, you'll probably be going over there and stabbing this army up soon. He's got a motherfucking slan. It's only level two. We should kill that before it becomes immortal. But we can't do it this turn. We did our action. We're done. You're currently hiding here to jump on Alariel. I've been looking at my recording equipment. The strangest thing, when we were in battle, my recording equipment was working buttery smooth. But on the campaign map, it is juttering like a motherfucker. Like, if you guys see some problems on your end, like watching the video, I do apologize. I think I know why, but it's weird that it's happening during the, um... 
during the campaign map sections and not during the battle sections where things are really kicking off. Doesn't matter that much. But the point is we've now upgraded White Peak from rank one to rank three, I think, on this turn and also fully reinforced it so it's ready to hold off anything so that if Tyrion comes down here with his fucking moon dragons, we're ready to defend the place. I reckon Kraken Claw probably could have taken him anyway, but it's always best to be sure. We're not really trying to have them break ourselves, break themselves upon our wall here. We just want to keep them bowled up down here while Marathi takes care of business up here, which is going to take a while. Lord of the Black Corp. That's why we're holding the gates as well, so that Alariel and um, uh, Illyrian can't just break out through here and assault us from that position either. The key to war is location, location, location. You knew this, but I'm telling you this because it's true. Salontal. I need you to find out what's going on with Nagaroth. Because if they start heading towards this area before um, Kalin can move in to fight them, that could be problematic. Head over there, see if you can slit up some of their lieutenants or something. Harganeth, Kawak, Spite Reach, the Black Pillar. I'm going to be at war with um, uh, the Decadent Host again at some point, so we will secure the region eventually, or the province. I'm already friends with Warriors of Chaos and a Slanesh faction. I don't need to be friends with... What's his face? Uh, what is his face? Leader of the Decadent Host. What's his face? Ah, uh, nah, the boy with the mirror shield and the shiny armor and he's all about Slanesh and he loves himself. What's he called? Sigurd? I don't remember. Something the Magnificent. Point is, Tyrion totally took the bait and attacked White Peak with our new defenses and an entire black arc here and he doesn't stand a fucking chance and i'm not going to fight this manually because i could only fuck it up Draw your blades, <laughs> we fight. result done and done garrison units were destroyed doesn't matter they'll be back next turn this was a major blow for him Enslaved. and another day at the office for us the only problem is that kraken claw can't really consolidate on that you and take their pro their territory because he can't go on land you want me to join war against Agol and the Decadent Host? Well, that would kind of make me an asshole because I just made a peace treaty with them. And if you break a peace treaty five turns after making it, you suffer reliability ability penalties, which makes a diplomacy really fucking awkward because everyone hates low reliability. Even the evil factions don't like it. You've attacked Eagle Gate. I gotta respect it, Gilgalian, but I don't think it's gonna help you much. He's got the Sea Gold Parrying Blade and the Ring of Hakan. Where's he getting all these crafted items from? And do you think we could steal one? That would be nice. He has a dragon. He's got a fucking star dragon. Kill it. Power before my might. That's precisely why I wanted to have lords with tiny shit armies uh, garrisoning those gates. At least until we can upgrade them a bit more. Tome of Furion. Oh, that's quite good. Why did my... Why did my... Why am I a traitor? Stop being a traitor, me. Come on, man. Be cool. Striking Let's go secure Harganeth. Valkyrie the Bloody is right over there. She could cause us some problems. Especially if she attacks now, so I hope she don't. In fact, why don't we help ourselves with that situation and establish Harganeth immediately. Now it has a garrison, which can help us defend it. Get the Dark Elf Manners as well, so it grows faster, and replenishment is better, and we're seeing pre. We will have to deal with Valkyrie. She's quite I strong. You. I may have completely humiliated her at the battle for Nagra, but that, Nagra, but that doesn't mean she's a chump. She's not a chump at all. She's quite dangerous. Did you get your units? You did. I'm a little hesitant to leave that as it is, though, because the Unicorn Gate is really undermanned. We don't want to try and hold territory down here yet because it would just be difficult to do. We'd be stretching ourselves out. So what I think I'll do I'm going to send Marathi down here to kill Alariel's army and sack Whitefire Tor and then head back through the gates. No contest. Goodbye. See, that was... Or resolving a fight against Alariel, a full army, and a Selman garrison, and that's all we lost. 
It's absurd. It's insane. It's ludicrous. We will accept our fate. Never queen. Alariel the never queen, because she's never queen. It's the only queen is right here. You'll love to see it. Honestly, if you're fighting High Elves, Ward of Cain is the way to go. More missile resistance against the High Elves is always a good idea. In fact, I should get it for these two as well. Good shout. Now, she can't really move much more this turn. <clears throat> but I don't think they have anything nearby that can take her army, so we should be alright. And then she can go back through the Unicorn Gate. With that now secure, because Alariel's dead, and move on to Toranlek. And then we can hit these. Once we've gone to Alicia and taken that, we'll have successfully linked up with the demonic forces on the eastern side, and we'll be good to go. And Ulthwan will fall. All powerful. Because the I elves are cringe. Yes, not the dark elves, they're definitely not cringe with their edgelord personas, no way. Just the high elves are cringe. Penumbral Pendulum is a fantastic spell. I don't know if it's like one of the best spells in the game, but it's so much fun to watch and listen to. Shadow Magic in general is fun. Very fun lore of magic. Pit of Shades is one of my favorites just for its visual and audio effects. Oh, you've got Sorceress Beasts. No. Now literally dead. Critical success. You don't have a Sorceress anymore. Take that, idiot. Stuff like this will help keep... um. Nagaroth in check. A battle against them is going to be quite tricky nonetheless. They've got a lot of artillery. They've got black guards of Nagarond who don't fuck around. Favored of the Witch King. And most of Kalan's army consists of Dread Spears. The Shades would definitely be the ones to make the difference here. And I'm hoping the Keeper of Secrets will be something of a wild card, but I've never used a Keeper of Secrets and I don't know how strong they are. I have a friend who recently did a very long Inkari campaign, and uh, I bet they know how good Keepers of Secrets are. But I don't. Did I forget to take... I forgot to take the... I forgot to take the Ziggurat of Dawn, didn't I? Whoops. Tyrant of Nagarok. Bye, oh, you can't even get there this turn anyway. Okay. Sail, damn you. you have to go around them. there for some reason. Alright, that's fine. Whatever. Anchors away. Go there. We Dread expansion. Fuck it. Get a bunch of artillery. I like artillery. Artillery's fun. So you're holding the fallen gates. They're massing an army over there. I would go hit them. The Hexaotl is level 5. And the units there are really tough. What I will do, actually, why don't we just prepare for this and keep attacking the garrison of Hexaotl? If we take that from them, that will cripple them. Good. That's their main source of money and recruitable units. It would hurt them very much if they lost it. Which would serve my purposes very much so. And I'd like to have the place for myself anyway. So am I. Good job, Mavir, fending off uh, Gilgalian. It went well. You did good. I don't like that they're keeping an eye on the... Un they've got agents here keeping an eye on the Unicorn Gate. I want you to start clearing them out. No log... Lo <laughs> no lollygagging. Get out of here. Take that. God damn, that's a tough army of Corsairs. I love Black Art Corsairs. It's funny because, like, looking at the Dark Elf Legendary Lord roster, I feel like my favorite should be Lokir Felhart. For those of you who don't know, he's a Black Ark captain. Like, his entire campaign is about using Black Arks. And he's also a octopus mask wearing, dual blade wielding pirate king. And he's fucking sick. Lokir Felhart is so cool. And I feel like he should be my favorite Dark Elf Legendary Lord. But he's not. It's the awkward thing. My favorite Dark Elf Legendary Lord is Marathi. I've tried the others and they're fun. Rakarth was really cool. That was a really fun campaign. But Marathi's my favorite. I always come back to using Marathi because she fights really well and her position on the campaign map is perfect for a really active campaign with a lot of stuff going on. And she herself is devastatingly strong. One of the best legendary lords in the game, in my opinion. And I'm afraid Loki, whilst being very strong and very cool, is just not quite as strong or cool when it comes down to actual gameplay. Plus, I, you know, I think it, I think it's cool that they moved him to Cathay. 
kind of spreads out the Dark Elf starting points a little bit. But I don't like his starting position. I don't enjoy playing there, which is a bit of a downer. What do you want? Hey, Harkon, how's it going? You're at war with Hexdiotl. You want peace. And you don't care that I'm friends with the Dreadfleet, which is surprising because I'm pretty sure you hate the Dreadfleet. So I thought you'd be more upset about that. But uh, if you're not, then... Yeah, buddy, let's have peace. Give me some cash. You want to take a few pot shots at the lizard, men? Go for it. It'll help me out quite a bit. I've noticed the loyalty is getting low in some cases. I think it might be time for the sacrifice to Atharti. Every turn, lords have a chance to gain two loyalty. Let's do that. Lovely. All right, Marathi, you've officially saved the day over here. You will march. Start heading up to Ambition here. I'll keep Sabioth around to try and weaken enemy armies before they can hit the towers or the gates. Maybe knock off these guys if there's no armies about at any given time. But with a bit of support, and with these guys' own strength actually holding the gates, I reckon they'll be alright. Don't need to hold them forever. At least we don't need to man them forever, is more, perhaps more accurate. I've been looking for I'm guessing I'm not allowed to declare war on, um, Sigvold yet. Proposal, yes. That was his name, it was Sigvold. I do so hate murderous rage before lunch. Seven turns remaining, yeah. Downer. Okay. Oh, Grond. Hello. What's in Grond? There's Valkyrie the Bloody. Maybe she'll come fight me. I don't know why my loyalty's going down so much. It's surprising. Making diplomatic treaties apparently helps with loyalty. Any treaties we can make? Enter then. Yeah, you guys want to trade? A drink, a fist fight, or both? Never mind. You're the vassal of the ecstatic legions. That won't work because I will be fighting you eventually. The Blood Hall Coven. Yeah, you want to trade? Yeah, you want some diplomacy? Yeah, you want some diplomacy? I fucking love diplomacy. But despite what my aggressive tendencies in this game may imply, I'm actually all about diplomacy. Big fan. Kalin's ready to move it, move on Nagron now. That's great. We'll start you off at the Circle of Destruction, which is a great name for a settlement, by the way. Do not cease. Is this place still vampired up to the gills? Not really. Why am I? It's, like, it's mostly Slanesh corruption. Why are we? Well, what dance are we dancing here? This is absurd. Speak. This is silly. We'll have to go the long way around then, I suppose. Establish a garrison. Oh yeah, you can hit this now, can't you? And I even force marched an army over there just so that when you take it, you'll take out one of their they armies at the same time. Them. It's very kind of them, actually. Very considerate. None. Stiladon Solar Engine. Man, that's spooky. Not our problem, we though. Will make them bleed. It is mine. Now, the Ziggurat of Dawn has a handy-dandy little building in it, if you'd like to draw your attention just over here, called the Beacon of Dawn, where unit experience gain per turn plus 200 for armies in province, which means if Admiral Illusion, if he just hangs out here, his no units will gain experience. Which means these will all be max rank before long. So, and like, if these guys come and try and take it from him, he'll gain experience from them too. And before you know it, this army will be max experience elite soldiers. Dreadlord of the Druki. And in fact, we might have the resources to make this happen, like, now. Speed that up. There we go. We don't currently have enough for the Beacon of Dawn, but if I was to use something else that I haven't told you guys about, which is called Slave Dictats, in which you can spend slaves to gain resources such as money or growth or control for the province but we just do that spend 400 slaves gain 1500 lovely you can do that once per turn in every single province and come here and oh we still don't have enough money that's okay that's okay it's actually a little bit annoying because we're like what 30 or 24 or yeah we're 24 gold off i don't know why my workers can't just give me a discount but whatever Darkling oh, the ecstatic. Yeah, the decadent hosts are the ones I'm going to be at war with. Bring 
death. You're a vassal of the Ecstatic Legions, which is Azazel, right? Yeah, we can trade. Ready we can totally trade. Contest. In agreement. Lovely, and now that gets us enough money. Perfect. You can see why I got confused, though, right? <laughs> like the, the names are practically the same, and their flags are the same color as well. And then we build the Beacon of Dawn, and then we rush it, and then it's done. Now, this uh, province is going to get chaosed up to the gills. Because this provides plus 10 chaos and undivided corruption. And this only provides plus 4 slanesh corruption. But we might be able to hang tough in that anyway. I'll sit here and bide my time, right? Because if Tarsic decides to head off to try and take the Ziggurat of Dawn back, then Kagarosh Dark Path, which is a brilliant name, by the way, can swoop in and take Hexayotl. Sadly, that was a failure. It, can never, it can't always be perfect. The other heroes, uh, Silentol. Can you do anything? No, you assassinated someone recently. That's fine. Hang tight. Relax. Have a drink. It's okay. I'll have more work for you next turn. Ah, oh, you want to pay me for a defensive alliance? How very generous. I want more money, though. And I accept. We agree. Lovely. Thanks, Azazel. I've never played as Azazel. I heard he's quite good. I mean, I think I've confederated him and used him in battle, but I've never played as the legendary lord, as it were. One of your lords answers an annual summons to court. Is that fear you spy in the eyes of a loyal subject or eager anticipation of a reward? Favored. On turn, start lords have a chance to gain loyalty, control, upkeep. Or root out some rebels. Or some experience. Or some money. If we do that, then she will never, um go up misloyal or unloyal ever again. And another one in which I can just gain three loyalty for my lord, so yep, take that, thank you. All loyalty issues have now passed. You love to see it. Feared by all. Yep, I'm good. Don't know why I had a lapse of faith for a second there, but it's passed. Be you mindless or foolhardy? You wanna fucking go, Valkyrie? You wanna go again? Do you remember what happened last Bad time? Sorceress. You fool. Gandalfa. How oh, can I reach her? And is she? She's on flank speed, which means she can't retreat. Get him! Get him! Marathi, get him! Get him! Man. Fuck him up! Go! Yes! Oh, what a shame. Oh, you hate to see it. Except you don't. You actually love to see it. Get Rex, loser. The mother. Your same. mother. I say we start focusing on her melee stats, because she's already a pretty good melee fighter and an exceptional spellcaster, but let's make her an exceptional melee fighter as well. Just to seal the fate of everyone who tries to fight her, really. Dread Commander. I love the Dread Commander. Thralls, move! Big fan. Now, can you... You can't really hit any, um... Dark Elf units at the moment, but you might be able to weaken this place. Yeah, good. You're fine where you are. Kagarosh, you're doing great. You're doing great. I was leading you down this path, but considering you're going to be in battle more often, why don't we upgrade your Harganeth Executioners? Make them better. Really lean in on that. I was really hoping Tarsic would fuck off. Because it would be funny. Because we could just swoop in and take their capital. But for obvious reasons, they're not too keen to give up their capital. Which is not very cash money of them, but hey. Fear my malice. I can't say I don't understand it, because I do. Keep hitting the garrison. If you can do enough damage to it, then... It will be consistently weak. And we'll be able to move in on it. Kagarosh, I do believe you got a skill that increases your ambush success chance. We should continue down this line, actually, because we can increase his ambush success chance even further. You have a pretty high chance to ambush. Not amazingly high, but pretty high. I reckon if we want to take Hexaiotl, we got to force him into a little bit of a trap, you know? I go. Now, the Fallen Gates garrison is pathetic, so when... If this ambush works and Kagarosh, in their eyes, disappears, all they'll see is a settlement ripe for the taking. And then Kagarosh will pounce. 
Hopefully, it'll be Tarsic that goes first. If not, I reckon Kagrosh can take Tarsic's army anyway. Sacred Croxagors are scary, but Shades can deal with them. If things here go well enough, like if we manage to take Hexaurtle, then I'll have Ulrichen take Skeggy and then go down and take Port Reaver as well. We will conquer Hexaurtle if we need to. In fact, we will eventually anyway, I imagine, but if the opportunity presents itself, I will take it. How are things going here? Things are generally fine. You're still keeping an eye on the Unicorn Gate. I don't like that. Get out of here. Why don't you investigate that? The sails. May as well. It's right there. Great Horde of Treasure may be received. You may have to defeat a foe in battle. Easy. The thrill of battle awaits. In fact, that provided us with healing and got his army back to full. I did notice that this guy was at war with us. We may want to try and intercept him. If they retake the Ziggurat of Dawn, it'd be really annoying, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. I don't really want to lose Grey Rock Point. It says a lot that I can come back to this game after like multiple weeks or so of not playing it. Come back and absolutely dominate anyone I go up against. Oh, look at that. Tarsic fell for it. Hook, line and sinker. More like hook, line, and stinker. What a fucking fool. I require slaves. So that has left Hexaotl fairly undefended. But speak. And Rakarth wants to talk to us. Oh, you want to trade? Buddy, I love trade. I'm all about trade. Let's trade. I love money. If we could confederate Rakarth, that would be amazing. He's a really good legendary lord. An Asu mage has been captured in a recent raid. Your lord desperately wants to make them their personal slave. However, this mage is a gift for prophecy, so it might be beneficial to claim him as your own. Nah, you can have him. Vampiric Ascension. Ah, the Vampire Count Endgame Crisis has occurred. Death and decay taints the winds of magic as a bitter feud breaks out among the vampires. With every major lord of the night claiming Neferata's legacy, now they can only be stopped by capturing all the major sites of power and putting an end to their dark rituals. See to it. It begins. Now that doesn't affect us immediately. They're loyal again, that's lovely. Ultimate campaign victory. Defeat Sylvania, the Drakenhof Conclave, the Barrel Legion, the Caravan of Blue Roses, and Musalon. I always think it's weird that Musalon is, con is included in there. They must be planning to make Musalon a legendary lord faction, surely. See, look, here's Musalon being scary. That doesn't affect us immediately, but they are very close to Ulth 1, and this is going to become a thing. More to the point, Marathi is going to come into contact with them very soon. The Sunderer. But if I could pick one of my lords to have to deal with that Get endgame way. crisis, it would be Marathi. So it looks like Illyrian are going to try and take another crack at uh, the Eagle Gate. Of the dark convent. But next turn, we'd be able to upgrade the... No, not next turn. Ah, well, a while from now, we'd be able to upgrade the Eagle Gate to have more garrison troops. What are you recruiting? Recruiting? What are you recruiting? Not. not anything particularly significant. I reckon the gates will hold. Supreme Sorceress of Grog. You should just focus on upgrading your spellcraft. Having a, a really powerful Open wizard magic. manning the walls would kind of win it for us. You Unlikely. concern me. A la, you know, Avalorn is quite dangerous and the Unicorn Gate is quite Feel weak. Like we can now upgrade it and we will immediately. There we go. The garrison is better now. Does it upgrade the projectiles? No, I don't think it does. Just upgrades the garrison. Still fine. But I want you to go over there. Are you tired? Yeah, you are. All right, just head down there and get ready to do stuff. But with that upgrade, I think the Unicorn what Gate would hold. Though having said that, this lady is only level one, which is a bit spooky. Scroll of Power, Scroll of Lycos, Sword of Might, Tome. Oh yeah, we'll give her the Tome of Furion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. So now she's got four casts of a powerful bombardment spell, which is very useful when defending sieges because your enemies tend to bunch up. She should be all right. And she's got Spirit Leech to deal with their general as well. She'll be fine. She's got this. I'm over here hanging out. 
I want to take Grand. I do. Grand is mine now. Malevolent Lord. Upgrade it. Done. And invest in the growth building so that it grows quicker. And done. What now? Now the problem is we did just colonize the settlement, which means we would be tired if we started a battle now. So hopefully she doesn't jump on us. She's just wandered off, Silence so I don't work. think she will. But now we control Grond, and we control Harganeth. This is a good fucking start. Get that built straight away. Start asserting control over the region. Upgrade that. Good stuff. Good stuff. Dark Lord. Are you within range? You sure fucking are. Enacting my dark desire. Now I guarantee that uh they didn't even build on the circle. What are they doing? Or did Glum actually just sack the place? I think Glum just sacked the place. We'll take it for ourselves. Man the walls! Man, easiest capture I've ever done. God damn. They've got a lot of armies here, though, and it's a little fucking spooky. You waste my if, she's, if they send all three of them at us at once, I don't know if Kalin can handle that. Fever we should... Oh, King. you can't rush repair. You can only rush construction. That is scary. Okay. You don't have any lords. You don't have any lords. Or heroes, sorry. And you don't have any heroes. That shade army scares me the most. See if you can... Reduce it just a little bit. You did it. You did it. Inflicted quite a bit of damage as well. He might refrain from sending that into battle. Well, I reckon we should also do, perhaps... They wouldn't be able to reach Parthak from there. So I say we try and get Parthuk to provide artillery support to Kellen. I hope that's close enough. I don't think it is. As I look at it, I don't think it's close enough. Come on. Yeah. Good. So he can provide artillery support if a battle starts. Which, like I said, will not make all the difference in the world, but it does help. Destructive, this one. Useful. Get you Elven healing. I'm actually going to focus him on this uh, tech tree again because if... Or tech tree, skill tree again. Because if he gets the full upgrade to Fleeting Shadow, he'll be able to ambush basically anyone. Which would be really strong. Training. Keep training the troops. Sycophantic schema, why not? You keep practicing your spells. Get better at spells. I love Flamestorm. It's so fun. I'm not keen on it in terms of its utility because it's a bit unreliable, but in terms of pure spectacle, it's an A+. Now, if you could assault the garrison and succeed again, we might be able to take it this turn. Good, that's a good sign. That's also a good sign. Yes, you did it. Excellent. They're looking pretty battered. Yes. Seriously, if you can take Exile this turn, we could rip their heart out right now. Oh, baby. Gimme, 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 gimme. Oh. Lizard men are just so easy to deal with. Goddamn. Where's your right of primeval glory army now, you fucks? Fuck, you can have the executioner's axe. I just really like you, Kagrosh. You deserve it. Get elven healing so your units regenerate faster, because we're going to need it. Oh, my God. It's level four. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's magnificent. Oh, fantastic. That is a big prize. That's a massive prize. That is pretty much the capital of the lizard men. I'd say the only settlement that is more the capital of the lizard men than Hexa and is that literally Hexaotl? Yeah, the only one that's more the capital of the lizard men than that, I'd say, is probably Itza. It uh, does seem very significant, but Hexaeol is definitely significant, and we just took it from them, and... Oh, they're not getting it back. <laughs> I am not giving it back. 
Get rid of that, replace it with a garrison building. We will hold this place. I'm not giving it back. More Flamestorm. Yes! What? Now, Elysian. I don't Fire. like this guy over here. He's just there thinking about kill doing that. stuff. I want you to go kill him. And then I want you to take Skeggy. Oh, yes. You and your wood elf bullshit. Fuck off. Calls us. It's too fucking easy. It does get to the point in certain campaigns where you really can just auto-resolve everything. Which isn't the most hype thing in the world, I'll admit, but it's still fun to play from a management perspective. And I feel pretty comfortable knowing that I could take command and deal with a lot of these situations if I needed to. Whilst traveling a dangerous and treacherous road, your entourage is set upon by a horde of beastmen. You believe you can fight them off, but there are options. Either charge into the fight with the cold ones at your side, or slip away to safety and pick off their leader from the shadows. So we can lead the charge, gaining the Tempest of Talon's name, which would provide a bunch of bonuses to cold one knights, which we aren't using. Or pick off their leader to get Shadow Dart, which would provide bonuses to shades. Plus 35% range for shades. And they cause fear. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit, actually. Oh my god, their range is 195. What the fuck? That's broken as shit. Oh my god. Dreadlord. That's ridiculous. I admire your darkness. <laughs> That's insane. That's nutty. I love it. You know what? You know what? You know what? I know we did just kind of spec into upgrading um, Black Ark or says a little bit, but I think he should switch to fielding Shades because he's way fucking better at it. 195 range on Shades. He can out-snipe High Elf Archers. He can out-snipe them. That's, that's nutty. That's dumb. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. The noble and elegant archers of the High Elves will be outdone by crossbows. Get fucked. Learn tech, idiot. Adapt or die. And they will. First sorceress. First sorceress and best. You know, it just occurred to me, I said earlier, like, I like all of the Dark Elf Legendary Lords. I can't think of one I don't like. Yes, I can. Hellebron. And the reason I didn't think of that before is because I forgot she existed. She's fine, I just don't like her very much. I've never tried her campaign though, maybe her faction mechanics are really good. But I look at her and I'm like, nah. I feel like I really should try her campaign though. I feel like I'm writing her off unfairly. Nope. We will be fighting you eventually, Sigvald, we will. Yeah, I think I'm writing off Hellebron unfairly. I should try out her campaign before I say anything more. But I, I genuinely forgot she existed. Straight up. You are just free loyalty event to get money and raise loyalty? Deal. My oh me, things are going well. Oh yes they are. They've pretty much abandoned Tor Anlek, which is pretty fucking funny. Tor of Rest have been stuck here for ages, unable to take um, Tor Care, which is really funny. I guess Musalon are about to flatten Bretonia, which is hilarious. Fuck Bretonia. Except I love Bretonia, just not in this campaign. God, this area is going to be full of undead. The Barrow Legion and Musalon here. That's going to be a that's going to be a battleground. That ocean is going to this little expanse of water is going to be filled with corpses. Filled. Absolutely filled. Enchanting beauty. And some of them might be mine. Bewitching fury. Go take Toran, like. We're still not losing that Cambrian War Sphinx, which I don't understand how we haven't lost it yet. Claim this place. Now, Toran, like, isn't going to be a brilliant prize because it's in uninhabitable terrain. But as long as we keep the uh, High Elves away from it, Mother it'll be fine. So... Marathi, let's start making you stronger. You, personally. She's got some really good bonuses here. She's got Enchanting Beauty, which makes all nearby enemies shit. Or shitter. 
1001 Dark Blessings, which increases our resistances, and a Deadly Onslaught, which is just a dam uh, temporary damage boost. But, like, hard to hit. Yeah, these stats weigh up. Wound Maker for more damage. That for more health. Surely regenerates. She can become really effective. Absolute stacked up unit she is. God damn. I love it when girls are absolute stacked up units. God damn, the Legion of the Gore Queen are really trying to not fight me, aren't they? Like, every time my forces move closer, they back off. I'll take the chill road if need be. Oh, hello. You guys are sending forces after Kallen, I see. My visions predict failure. You've got some units there. This will fail. You've got a proper no. army there. Yes. And most of Kallen's army is, um, <laughs> Dread Spears. With some elite infantry in the form of Chaos Warriors of Slanesh, which I wouldn't say are elite enough to really turn the tide. Our shades are helpful, but they've got shades too. We have a Keeper of Secrets. I don't know how good they are. I've never used one. Some Death Hags, which are low level. A leader, which who is only a melee combatant. Though she does have Rubric of Dark Dimensions, which allows her to cast Pit of Shades twice. Which is a really good spell. The goddess forbids it. Lots of Dark Shards, Shades, Cavalry, Monsters, Bloodrack Shrine, four Reaper Bolt Throwers. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Salontol's not tired. I'd really like it if you damage that army. That's a good sign. That's because you succeeded. What is this foolishness? Did some damage, but I don't think that would allow us to win, per se. However... Oh, come on. Do these trees not count as a good ambush spot? Give me a break. I did see it flick to 70%. Is Never that within range? Nobility. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we can make this work. Unseen and deadly. She could ambush them. If she even manages My to just ambush to Sabatha's me. army and then we only have to fight yeah. Sabatha. Yes, they are both called this Sabatha. No That's really funny. One is the no. Dark Marshal and one is just I'm Sabatha. But if we manage to take out her army, then we'd just be facing the Dark Marshal. And that would be a tough fight. You to dust. But I reckon we could win. We could. The could being the, the key point there. But the problem is Sabatha's army... Sorry. The Dark Marshal's army has enough variety to really cause us problems. The Reaper Bolt Throwers could tear through Noble the Dread Spears. We could try putting the Zombie Pirate Deccan's mob way up front so that they only fire on them. Because the Zombie Pirate Deccan's are there to die. Straight up. But a large amount of Dread Spears could help deal with um, the cavalry and the, the monsters and stuff. Although I don't know if they're strong enough really to deal with them properly, but they would at least trade reasonably well. Dark with the shades being able to take them down, Keeper of Secrets might have to go after their artillery. I reckon they could. These guys have to get stuck in mulching the infantry. Considering those two are infantry sized and you have... Yeah, they can probably take care of the Black Guards and Nagarond. They don't have a lot of line holders, but they do have a lot of firepower. More than us, actually. And firepower was kind of our main form of victory here. Which is worrying. It is. But I've set up a plan. It would be an ambush, it's worth pointing out, if we do manage to do this prop. No, no, it wouldn't be. Well, if the Dark Marshal goes first and it's an ambush, then we could pick our targets, which means taking them out and taking them out and then having to fight these properly. Which we could do. What spells do you even have? Acquiescence and Lash of Slanesh, which is a bound spell. Yeah, you just have bound spells. You're not a proper spellcaster. Okay. But you're a good fighter. With armor piercing damage. Cruel and deadly. We might be able to deal with that. I don't know. We'll see. Let's go Never check the ch take the chill road. I'll just scoop that up. Thank you very much. You didn't even build on it. What were you even doing? Waste my fucking time. I came here for a fucking shootout. 
Literally, because Malekith has an army of shades and I have an army of shades, so it literally will be a shootout. <laughs> I don't feel confident fighting Malekith's army, I gotta be honest. Not least of all because Malekith is leading it, and I don't know if you guys have noticed, but he's quite strong. And he's kind of a big deal. He's kind of the Witch King of Nagaroth. It's kind of a big deal. All we need to do is hold Hexaotl, and that keeps these guys in check. But I do want to see if I can get Ilrishan to take Skeggy. Move down, take that. And that would push their borders back even further. Also damage the faction as a whole, because these are some of their oldest settlements. The ones they've held for the longest amount of time. And we're taking them away from them. Losing Hexaotl has already probably damaged their ability to recruit veteran units. Which is good, because it means our units will be better than theirs. Theoretically. You leveled up, very good. Get inspiring presence so you can start training your troops. I do want to take the Phoenix Gate. I do plan to have Marathi do that soon. Although it's at high rank and she's not replenishing very fast because this terrain is dog shit. Maybe I could get... I would get her to take the Shrine of Kurnos and then rest there, but Eltharion and his entire army is right here. And the AI does have anti-player bias, so they would come after me. Where did these two big armies come from? Shit. I cannot rewrite reality. Keep weakening them. Dark sorceress. We have a deal. I don't know for sure, but it's possible that a lot of stuff might happen next turn. Let's take demons. Skeggy. Let's just take it away from them. You abuse- I actually sold them Skeggy near the start of the campaign to secure that military alliance. Well, they broke the military alliance, so I'm taking it back. That's what it. happens. You should have been nicer to me. And now I own Skeggy. Defensive building, please. Thank you. Now, I dare you to try and take it back. With your army of one fucking Croxagore Ancient. Yeah, have fun. Have fun. You loser. Yeah, let's start upgrading shades. Uh, we don't have enough money to turn his army into a shade army at the moment, but he does have a lot of shades right now. Ah, oh, such a good word. I had no idea that word of power existed. So fucking good. Ah, oh, beautiful. Disgusting, you might even say. So you're providing... Oh, you might need to move a little bit closer to provide artillery support. There we go. A little bit of an extra bonus to make sure we win that fight. I'm hoping the Dark Marshal goes first. If Sabatha goes first, we can kill her and good. We've removed some of their units, but it would be really helpful to fight the Dark Marshal under uh, ambush circumstances. You... You... Oh... It might be best to fight him manually so these garrison units don't die. Let me be clear, these garrison units don't fucking matter, really, but they do provide, like, uh, auto-resolve power. It might be better to have them about, because we're going to need every edge we can get to take on the Dark Marshal. But if I fuck up this battle and don't fight it properly, we could end up losing more than we gain. Give it a go. Give it a go. Give it a go. Let's try and do a good job. We've got Shades. Shades are fantastic at the start of ambushes. The amount of firepower they put out is immense. Talon can probably go after Lorsatel. I think they replaced the leader, Sabatha, with another leader, which is this lady. You take her out, that would help. We'll probably send the Death Hags to go after the Black Guards of Nagarond. Shoot the shit out of them. Um, the Shades need to go. I might position the um, Dread Spears to receive the charge from that War Hydra. Send the Keeper of Secrets to destroy their artillery piece. These aren't great. Ah, this isn't great. All these trees. Fucks with our line of fire. Some ambush positions are actually really terrible. <laughs> so the Keeper of Secrets is fucking terrifying. That is fucking spooky. But very cool in its own way as well. Very cool. Alright. Uh, let's move you... Put you there. Okay. You go after them. You... 
go after them. You go after that. You go after them. Are you guys firing? Now fire. There's your target. Go for it. You move in front that way so you don't get in the way. You know what? If they're all going to swarm like this, take advantage of it. Watch this, guys. This is very cool. Ah, oh, I love that spell. Fucking love that spell. I fucking love that spell. It's so good. So fun. You need to get out of there. That's gone poorly for you. It's fine. Most of them have been annihilated anyway. You're dealing with them. Push you guys up so you can deal with it more quickly. Shades are dealing with the Hydra. I may have assigned targets poorly, but it doesn't actually matter in the grand scheme of things. Shame you don't have regeneration. That would be very useful right now. The Black Guard of Nagrond absolutely melted. Their artillery is falling away. The Hydra is melting. Army losses is kicking in. There it is. You two get out of there. You lot get away from there. Let the shades take care of it. It's funny. Archers can usually track fast-moving targets relatively well, but slow-moving targets, they just can't. They just can't deal with it. Now, I don't know how many of their units will be... I don't know if the game will just delete their army at the end of this, or if, um... Like, they'll actually have some units left over, so I want to at least make sure their lord is dead. You should get out of there, that's a scary place to be. Alright, at the very least, get rid of their fucking Charybdis. That wasn't a Hydra, it's a Charybdis. Yes, those are different things. Two different units. Can you get around them and attack the Charybdis, please? I just want it dead. Attack- Units are so bad at chasing in this game, it's actually agonizing. Go on, get another swing in. Just kill it, just kill it, just kill it, just kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. I swear to God, I'll kill you if you don't kill it. Please. For God's sake, woman, just kill it. Oh my God. Oh, it's the most frustrating thing in the world. Stab it. Just once. Just stab it once. Just stab it once. Go on, do it. Oh my God, it hurts. You, uh, she actually knocks that one off the map. I was watching someone play Medieval 2 the other day, and units chase, like run down fleeing units, so well in that game. And I remember in Shogun 2, your cavalry would absolutely annihilate fleeing infantry, which is the whole fucking point. But in this game, the animations are so clumsy that they actually can't. They put so much work into making the animations nice, that sometimes they're not actually effective, which is frustrating. I used to have horsemen in like uh, Shogun 2 or Rome 1 or Rome 2 that would get like 500 kills because at the end of the battle, they would just clean up. They would sweep all the fleeing units, sweep them up, kill them. In this game, yeah, you can get quite a lot of kills at the end of a battle by sweeping up the remaining enemy units, but not nearly as many. Now, that might be a balanced thing so that people don't lose their entire fucking armies if they lose a battle, but... Oh, it's very frustrating. Not really much point to enslaving, really, because we didn't take any unit casualties. What I should have done was have my units lead the charge and kept these guys back, because they can't heal. See if we can increase unit experience. That's a pretty fair trade if all we're losing is Dread Spears and a unit of fucking deckhands. To take out the Dark Marshal's army, that's kind of worth it. Degenerate Kettle Drummer. Cruelty and excess have a certain rhythm. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Alright, success. That was successful. We won. Which is kind of surprising in of itself. I don't like how that dwarf is there. That makes me uncomfortable. I am bidden not to destroy you. Consider you. 
Sure, we can have a peace treaty. I didn't even know we were at war. Whatever. Dreadfully won't like it, but I don't care. Oh wow, they're converging on Hagrith. Noble of Nagaroth. Dreadlord of Nagaroth. That's actually bad. I want Hagrith. Actually, it's good, right? Hagrith is great and all. Like, it's a good financial settlement. But them pinning down Hag... I've got an idea. I've got an idea. We are long past words. I don't know if this will work. Maybe it will, maybe it will. Oh, fuck, Valkyrie's here. Ah, oh, your timing is terrible. Dreadlord of the Druki. I'm thinking if I could take Nagarond, I might be able to confederate Malakith because you'll have one settlement left that's under siege. But Valkyrie just decided to show up. I will decapitate you! Then again, her army is pretty damaged. If she takes the chill road, I don't give a fuck. I just don't want her to take uh, Grond. There might be something I can do about that, actually. Feared by all. No mercy! But we must take Nagarond at the very least. It's the seat of the Dark Elves, like the seat of their empire. We have to own it. Thank you very much. No looting, just occupy. Lord of the Black Court. Oh, it's beautiful. And we've already got one of the legendary buildings in there as well. Towers of the Black Guard, which reduces upkeep for all Black Guard of Nagarond, rec reduces recruitment costs, increases recruit rank twice. And recruits, decreases the duration that it takes to recruit them, so we can get black guards and Nagaron for days. Dreadlord of Nagaroth. Oh yes. A terror to their enemies. Now this presents a question because I have taken Malakith's capital. I defeated one of his army, two of his armies. Sorry, defeated two of his armies. His final remaining city is under siege from overwhelming force. Like there are a lot of tomb kings down there. He is fucked, well and truly. Like, there's nothing he can do now. Yes, you will die, but it will be slow, and I will enjoy it. How can you not agree to a fucking confederation offer? You're literally about to die. I command. Have you grown so tired? Bow. I do not make a cruel. I'm sure you'll. And my strength rank is one. Like, I'm the strongest on the board as well. Surely, 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 surely you should just give up. I refuse. If I can't confederate Malekith, so be it. I'm happy to continue the campaign without him, but it'd be a shame because I would really like to. Get rid of that. It's worthless. That's not much better. Replace it with a defensive building and a... I'd say probably an assassin building so we can get more assassins. This assassins are great. I can't believe he won't go for the confederation though. What a fucking bitch. Mother of the Druki. Kavina has reinforced the Phoenix Gate. Well, Mal... Not Malakith, sorry. Marathi's definitely going to need to take time to replenish then. You get to Unicorn Gate. Although if you abandon Tor Anlek, they're probably going to attack it. Never. I watch from the shadows. You need to keep shields suppressed as well. Critical failure. Fucking brilliant. Cool. Sabius been injured. Annoying. Hag now there is something we might be able to do in regards to Kavina. If we could set up a decent ambush, which apparently all of these trees did not count. That one does. There was one there that did. If we could set up a decent ambush and win, we could replenish from taking slaves and then move on to take the unicorn or the phoenix gate. It's about the best I've got in terms of a plan right now. Hatred drive. Because when she's outside of Tor Anlek, she doesn't replenish at all here, which is pretty bad. So this is a in bit of a gamble. Shadows. If it doesn't work, I've wasted time. Ambition makes haste. And 75% isn't actually that high of an ambush success chance. I see that fail quite often. Black-hearted 
ready. You just rest in Hexai Auto, my friend. You did a brilliant job. They've decided to reinforce Port Reaver. <laughs> They've finally taken a hint that we're kind of moving on their ship. This place is well defended. Could be better defended, but it's well defended. Now it's better defended. Although the garrison will still take a long time to replenish. I might want to look into getting that replenishment building. Um... Tyrant of Nagar. To be honest, don't need the Shades building here. Replace it with a replenishment one next turn. More control is helpful. Callan had one hell of a fight. Hate in but she did it. Destructive, this one. Given her aristocratic name of power. With the untimely and not at all suspicious death of a rival lord, a large swath of land and its sadly disloyal inhabitants have fallen under your control. You should either draft them into your army and break them to your will, or disperse them throughout your land, isolating them and diluting their potential for rebellion. Get Barbed Lash, which is kind of shit. Or we could make Kalin the new Dark Marshal, replacing the person she just killed. That's fun. I like that. She defeated the Dark Marshal, she became the Dark Marshal. That's fun. That's very fun. A terror to their enemies. Plus, that provides bonuses to, uh, well, it lowers the upkeep of Dread Spears, Dark Shards, and Bleak Swords. And she already buffs uh, Dread Spears and, uh, and Bleak Swords, so... And Dark Shards, actually. Interesting. Establish a garrison! Hate incarnate. So she can have a relatively tough army that punches above its weight. The Shades allow her to do considerable damage in battle. She has a Keeper of Secrets, so she's not exact. it's not exactly weak, you know? Fuck it. Make it happen. Yeah, a bunch of them. Super cheap. The Death Hags help as well. Cry of War, Rune of Cain, or Witch Brew. What does Witch Brew do? Does Rampage. Rampage is a risky thing to go for. Removing control of your own units. Because Rampage basically makes a unit uncontrollable. But they usually gain bonuses when they're rampaging. But removing control of your own units is always a bit of a risky prospect. So the Cauldron of Blood already causes fear and terror, so Cry of War seems fairly pointless. May as well get Rune of Cain. Buff stats. Well, considering we're going to have a block of Dread Spears, who are quite good at defending themselves, I reckon more flanking troops would probably be quite useful. We'll need to stay here another turn anyway to get recruitment back up. I'd love to get another Keeper of Secrets. In fact, fuck it, I'm going to get another Keeper of Secrets, because it's hype. Two Keepers of Secrets should be able to decimate anything they're sent against. Combined with the fact that they can both cast spells. Which I forgot to do during the ambush because things moved fairly quickly. But I'll remember next time. I will. You believe me, right? I will. I can't believe we took Nagaron, goddamn. I can't believe I did it in this recording. Like, I wasn't expecting to do anything big. But here we are. Now, I don't reckon even at full health, Kagarosh's forces could take that. I reckon staying holed up in Hexoyotl, he'll be fine. We'll start sending Erdothane over there to see if he can't soften him up a little bit. And, uh, Urishan definitely wouldn't be able to do it. Can they get to him this turn? No. But the problem is, we wouldn't be able to get to the Ziggurat of Dawn if it was under attack. Skeggy is pretty well defended. Yes. Plotting a course. Upgrade that. Then go here and uh, get that and complete construction on it, which uses up pretty much all of our slaves. But now the garrison here has a uh, sorceress at the head of it as well. Makes it a little bit stronger. Problem is it hasn't replenished properly yet. Such slaughter awaits. I want to get you more shades, because you're very good with them. And I want to kind of have um, Ulrishan in a position where he can jump to either the Ziggurat of Dawn or Skeggy and defend whichever one needs it, because they're not within range of getting to either of them at the moment. The problem is if they go to, like, here and then stop, 
well, if Ulrichen goes there, they'll go there. And if Ulrichen goes here, they'll go here. They'll take something from us. And to be honest, uh, it wouldn't be so bad, but Skeggy is... Skeggy hasn't, like, replenished yet. Its garrison hasn't replenished. And that's what makes this awkward. If this was fully replenished, I would honestly just put Ulrichen in Ziggurat of Dawn and let Skeggy fend for itself, because that's a decent army that can defend itself. But it's still very weak, just like how Hexaotl's garrison is still very weak, because this is not suitable terrain, which means replenishment is slowed. Tyrant. It's awkward. It's not ideal. You could even say that the terrain is unsuitable. You couldn't take a round to watch the footable, and Stephen Gary would not say that she's rootable. But such is the way of things. I reckon Parthak can go back home now, he's done his job. Successful assassination, you love it. Dreadly. Why can't you move? Is there a reason you can't move, sir? Oh, because you're providing her with recruitment. That's right, that's correct. That is true. Yeah, yeah. It all checks out. Get more slaves. Uh, and increase the replenishment for people under your zone of influence. Let's see what happens. We're at the, the way things are at the moment, multiple things could happen every turn. Like this, for example. Good thing... Actually, no, he failed to wound Sheed's forces, didn't he? Shield's forces. It doesn't matter. We're strong enough to take her. We have lives to end. Sorted. Oh, you f hook, line, and stinker. What a fool. Oh, we'd lose the Cambrian War Sphinx. Oh, fine. That thing's been hanging on for way too long. I have need of slaves. Attempting to look after that thing was actually proving more of a hindrance than anything else. If you want peace, Malekith, if you want to get out of this alive, you need to join a confederation with me. It's the only way you're getting out of there, I'm telling you. It's the only way he's getting out of there. I'm pretty sure they just took it, because they have overwhelming numbers. There's no reason they shouldn't attack. Only thing I can think of. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh, Grom Brindle, you legend! We're not allies, I should point out. I'm not allied with Grom Brindle, but we're both at war with Valkyr, so he joined in because it provides an easy opportunity to defeat her. Perfect! Oh, that's ideal. Thanks, Grom Brindle. You've always been my favorite dwarf. He actually is. I love Grom Brindle. Tor Corali. Oh, oh, okay, that's just that place. All right, I thought for a minute it was um, uh, Ankari's place that was lost, which would have been a huge problem, but this was... A normal settlement controlled by Bellacor, which means its faculties were shit. We can just build another outpost somewhere else. I don't think we lose the units because we still have a military alliance with Bellacor. Sure enough, they're all still here. Spiteful Conjuration, Blade, well... Yeah, Blade Wind's really good and really cool. These guys are doing great. They're absolutely holding these places down. I am the first sorceress. They sent another Certainly army in to not. reinforce the Phoenix Gate, but I don't think it'll help them. Did they take it? No, they're still holding on. As his army gets weaker and weaker. I am not known for my ability to fix it. Malekith, mate, give it up. It's over. There's five... Four? Sorry, I can't count. No, I can count. There's five armies of Tomb Kings there. You can only have three armies in a battle, which means they could fight a battle with him, lose, and send another two armies in straight away. He's fucked. Then again, he does have two armies worth of units here, and good ones as well. But that's why they're not attacking. They're just sieging. He's suffering damage every single turn. He's getting weaker and weaker. Don't get me wrong, this would be a hard thing to take. Like, my army wouldn't be able to do it. That's way too tough. But he is so horrifically outpowered right now. My axe yearns to be plunged into your skull. See, Grom Brindle doesn't like me very much, but I was hoping our joint battle against the Gore Queen might have, like, softened him up a bit, but no. Oh well. We might have to deal with him at some point. 
I mean, he's probably at war with the Exiles of Nehek, isn't he? No, he's not. Okay, well, if he attacks me, he will be at war with the Exiles of Nehek. That's probably why he hasn't attacked me. Lord of For the Come on, take the Phoenix Gate. A decisive victory. What more do you want? Witch King. I am Another gate taken. It really is that simple. But I think we control all the gates now. Yeah, we do. We control almost all of the paths leading to the Outer Rim of Ulf 1. All we need to do now is finish taking the Outer Rim of Ulf 1. Probably go in through here. Or let Bellacor take care of that, because he seems to be doing alright. And then we can conquer the inside of Ulf 1. And then Ulf 1 will be taken. Split up between Chaos forces, which is probably like the one thing they didn't want to happen. And it's precisely what is happening. They should have been nicer to Marathi, what can I say? Be nice to the hot goth woman. Or you die. <laughs> Especially if she knows spells. Always be yes. nice to people who know spells, trust me. Better safe than sorry, right? Dark Elves are so fun to play, man. Jeez, I love playing as them. Such a good time. Yeah, I guess Spyfall, that's a good one. Supreme I didn't even check what law she is. Beasts. Hey, we didn't have a beast caster yet. Fun. I like uh, beast law, but it's definitely not one of the better ones, you know? It's alright. It's a decent law of magic, but that's just it. Decent. Assassinate his priest, please. You failed. I would say you're fired, but I'd be worried about what you'd do to me if I fired you. So, um, congratulations, you're not fired. <laughs> it really is that simple, isn't it? Oh, hello, guys. How's it going? I approve of these dark deeds. Those are some scary armies. A vile plan. I think I can take them. Attack! Possibly. This is a strong army. I mean, Orizol seems to think I can, so... Fuck it. Draw your blades, we fight. Oh, look at that, you're all dead. It's yeah, that's what me. happens when you mess with the me. That's a good one to have. And then back into Raid Leader to just make the shades better. They all have magical attacks now, which means they all bypass physical resistance, which is actually insanely powerful that Black Ark commanders can just give their entire army magical attacks. If we weren't up against demons, this army would be perfect for it. Shoot them all to death. The combination of magical attacks and armor piercing means there's literally almost no defense against these guys' attacks. Kind of absurd, actually. Disgusting, you might even say. I want to try something similar with Kagrash again that he did before. I want to get him to try and lay an ambush. My he does still here. replenish if he's not in, in the city, so if he just sits there and hangs out for a bit... Of then he might just be able to fuck up that army and then swoop in and take Port Reaver and then we've got this entire province. Well, not quite. We've got that entire province then we need to come down here, take Maku Peaks and then we'd have this entire province too. And then we'd have taken a lot from the Lizard Men in a very short amount of time. Which will cripple them, by the way. If you can get that all the way to max, go for it the most replenishment possible. Murderous Lord. Improve that significantly, these guys will now replenish a lot faster, and then Hexiotl will be a fortress. This is such a strong fucking army. Because <laughs> I've played battles with full Black Art Corsair stacks, and they are effective. They're very effective. Especially with that increase to missile strength, having like armor piercing bonuses and stuff like that, and these guys being really good in melee. This shit works. And like the Sorceress of Death can just go around casting spells at people, inflicting fuck tons of damage. It works. In a defensive siege, I imagine it'd be even better. May as well get some wood out of Nagra. Why not? Helps with our trade. We'll end turn one more time, ladies and gentlemen, and if nothing pressing comes up, we'll end the video here, because it's been over two hours. I get very carried away when doing this, because I love it. Uh, but, you know, I've got to rein myself I speak in. For the Druki. What is it you desire? Ikit Claw is offering me money. Ikit, how did you know that I love money? 
But I also love agreements, and I love the idea of getting a military alliance with Ikiklaw and getting Skaven, getting Skaven energy weapons. I love that idea more than anything else. Yes, please. And I'll take some money as well, of course. Friends with Ikiklaw, no less. What a guy. Ikiklaw is tons of fun to play. If, you wanna, if you're wanna, if you thinking about trying out Skaven and you're not sure which faction to play, I personally would recommend Clan Wars because they're my favorite. I love playing Clan Wars. I just love Queek. But realistically speaking, you should play Ikiklaw. He is the best. He's not the best. Clan Eshin is the best because shadowy dealings are broken. But in terms of pure fun and like ridiculous firepower, Ikiklaw is the best all the way. Clan Scryer. So good. One of your lords has arrogantly thought to erect a giant brass statue in the capital without attaining your permission. The statue is of Hukon the Sunderer, a minor deity. To make matters worse, you can see this I saw from your balcony. What should be done? I could levy a fine, which would upset him. I could topple the statue, which would get me the brass horn. Which is decent, I suppose. That is actually quite decent. Or I could be like, yeah and tie him to the statue and flog him, for some reason. Uh, may as well get the brass horn. Eagle Gate has been besieged. What is your dark purpose? You know what, it'd be a good time to give you the brass horn, actually, because you'd be standing with your troops. And we'll give you that too, just in case. Now let's see the damage, shall we? Valiant defeat. That is a little spooky. It's not a particularly powerful army he's fielding, but neither's ours. I suppose we could. It wouldn't be too difficult to just meet them head on and have the demonettes clean up. She could be casting spells. She's a shadow caster. So we might be able to create something of a big blob, like a big massed engagement going on. We could have the Demonettes of Slanesh proceed through there and then pop out and hit them. Alright, we'll do this and then that'll be the end of the episode. May as well end the episode on a battle. There hasn't actually been many manually fought battles in this episode. Uh, you know, like I said, I wasn't, I didn't set this up to try and show something off or do something big and special. It was just because I wanted to play some Total Warhammer 3. But yeah, we can end on a battle, which I might lose. Go on, Mavit, I believe in you. He can take Gilgalian, look at him, he's a chump. That helmet looks stupid on him. Silver and Guard, their one job is to hold the line, and they will, like they will straight up. But that's why we want to sneak around the back and take everything out. The, uh, their cavalry is a bit of an issue, actually. That's a bit of a concern. But we'll just have to cope. So, Demonettes in the trees. They burst out, they hit them, do a lot of damage. Big block of infantry with ranged units behind them. We'll really want to use the ranged units to get rid of their cavalry. I'd like her to be with the melee infantry because she can use stand or die, which will make them hold longer. The Nehikara Warriors might actually do reasonably well against their infantry because they gain bonuses. Not huge bonuses, but they do gain bonuses. Skirmish mode off, guard mode on. This could be a little tricky. I reckon we'll probably win, but I am often High Elves, if of any faction that actually manages to kind of give me more problems than I'd expect, High Elves are definitely one of the worst ones. If they can take out the chariots, that would help. I mean, if you guys... Yeah, you're not going to be able to catch them. Where are the hidden foes? Oh, they're there. Shadow warriors, yeah. I mean, if you could tie up their fucking archers in melee, that would help immensely. Slash, kill. 
cold-blooded killers. Death is coming. You need to push up. Shades. Actually, if you just chase them away, that helps I immensely. Waste their time. That means they're not doing their job. And all I'm spending is melee infantry who's only... Oh, you guys are coming around the side. I don't like that. Ever onwards. I need you to get closer. And I need you to slow them down. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Come on, come on, come on. You're virtually there. Come on. Now. And you guys, come in and take them out. Eager for battle. Take out their archers, they're the biggest problem. You keep moving. Slaughter them. Kill everything. I think they're charging with their missile and, uh, cavalry, which is a problem. That won't help right now. Hit them. You can take them. Demonettes are doing some good work. They'll be the key to this, I reckon. You should shoot them, actually. You need to get out of there. Move. Start taking out their archers. They're the biggest problem. These guys are dying, which is good. Excellent. All right, turn around, Forward. deal with that. You push up to the front. We need some of your more cloud-clearing spells. How are the demonettes doing? Very well, as it turns out. You guys take them out. You guys are doing a great job on them. We're actually winning. It's quite nice. Pin them down. Uh, yes. Give them something to think about. It's not a great cast, but it's better than nothing. Almost hit our own troops. I think it did just skim them a little bit. How are these guys doing? Hitting them in the back. It's very good. They're back. Very annoying. Shoot them. Hell Scourge is taking care of them. It's going quite well, actually. Yeah, it's going fine. Jump in on them. Who's back here? You. Push up to the front. How are you doing? You're fine. You're fine. Problem is, the lines have actually gotten really messy, so my spells aren't really an option right now. Except for Malkov's Mystifying Miasma. That one I can use all the time. Hit them with that. And then Enfeebling Foe, that guy. And then charge into him, and you stand or die, and get everyone buffed. We're not looking for a clean victory, we're just looking for a win. We are ready. No and that much, I Dark think we can manage. Shoot them, understood. they're being a real fucking pain. Of course they came back. You're not doing anything, kill them. Chase them off the battlefield. I don't want to have to deal with them anymore. Gilgalian is getting his ass kicked. I do believe, yep, army losses just kicked in. There we go. Now, we want to damage them sufficiently so they don't just come back and try this again next turn. This is actually quite important. Rush them down. Rush them down. I'm going to get the archers to stop firing. We don't need extra casualties. She's running him down, doing quite a good job of it, actually. Which is funny, because he's a melee unit and she's really not. Good, good, good. Now, the demonettes, unlike the awful display we saw in that previous battle of trying to chase down a unit, demonettes are actually exceptionally good at running down infantry. Murder them, if you would. You're working on them. It's fantastic. The zombie pirate deckhands will never catch them. Not in a million fucking years. You won't catch them, but you can intercept those, so go for it. Yeah, not the cleanest fight I've ever seen. I probably could have done better, but I'll take it, honestly. Slow them down. 
have them meet their fate with dignity. Or, you know, have them meet it anyway. Oh, that's beautiful. Lots of blood and gore. Let's see, how did my personally recruited units do? Not great, to be honest. Although those Hellsco uh, Hellscourge Marauders did a good job. Obviously, they did fuck all. Somehow, those guys did very little. Despite being anti-infantry. Honestly, didn't go that badly, all in all. And everyone gains experience for it. So the garrison here will gain experience that will carry over to future battles. So they're stronger now. Obviously, Mavir will level up as a result. So she becomes better. And the elves have failed again. And Gilgalian gets nothing because he was defeated in this battle. He's a uh, faction lord, a faction leader, so he is immortal, but he gets no experience. He wasted his time. Easy victory. Easy victory. And free slaves, and free money, and free experience. Good job, Gilgalian. Now fuck off. She's probably my favorite of the gate defenders. She's done a very good job so far. And I love shadow magic, what can I say? Shadow is a money gang. We love casting spells. Alright, well I'm gonna leave that there, ladies and gentlemen, before I end up playing even more, because I can very much see myself doing this for another, like, hour or two, and... Aside from that taking up a fuck ton of memory on my computer, all of that footage, I simply don't have time for it, and I also have to edit this later, so that's gonna take a while, and, you know... No one's actually really, really, really hyped for more Total Warhammer. I understand, don't worry about it. It's just like I wanted to do. But I do have to rein myself in, so I shall. Thank this you so much guy. for watching. This has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed myself immensely, to be honest. I love playing this game. I adore it to pieces. Despite Creative Assembly's, <laughs> to put it uh, in more blunt manner, money-grubbing tactics, which are a bit off, I like the game very much. It's very enjoyable. I love playing it. What can I say? I wish the Dark Elves would get a bit more. I don't think they need any more Legendary Lords. I think they're well set for that, but their mechanics do need a bit of an overhaul to keep them interesting. But honestly, I enjoy them as is, so I don't think it matters that much. You know who needs a new Legendary Lord? Norska. For fuck's sake, they have two. Two Legendary Lords. That's it. So one of them's not even a Norskin, he's a troll. But whatever. A rant for another day. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Linky, Sion Cedar, Bimblewort, Tom King, Majoko Maiman, Adash Sanjeev, Alkir, Honeydew Corporation, Sweet Baby Red, MB Elias, Lord Skullington, Jess Kitty, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Leper Lullaby, K Bub, Magical, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Swirled, Warmaster Oku, SCP 106A, Namad, and Kenny T100 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you all so much for watching. It is fun. It is fun. I love playing Dark Elves. It's very satisfying. They're a very strong faction. Their units absolutely slap. It's very enjoyable. I do love playing Cathay, and maybe I'll showcase that a bit on the channel at some point. Like Miao Ying, I think I've mentioned before, is one of my favorite legendary lords, second to like Balthazar Gelt himself. But, um, you know, I don't see the point in flooding the channel with uh, Total War stuff too much because it's not really what everyone's looking for. And I'm like, well, why try and push something that everyone doesn't want to, that people don't really want to watch when I could just play it in my own time, you know? And, um, produce other stuff. Like, I love Frostpunk. I've been having a great time with Frostpunk. I've said that a million fucking times, and I'll say it a million and one. That's a ton of fun. I love doing that. And playing Fear and Hunger has been very, uh, immersing, investing, I guess. I've really become personally invested in that one, but, and it is enjoyable, but it's also not enjoyable. That's a weird one. But regardless, yeah, I just wanted to do this for fun as a change of pace. Thank you so much for watching. Where happens next time? It shan't be Total Warhammer 3, but there will be more in the future because... I can't help myself. But whatever happens next time, I hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye.